In 1911, Ray Haroon won the Indianapolis 500 without the use of a riding mechanic. He utilized a new feature that allowed him to see what was happening behind him. Soon after, rear view mirrors became a standard item on passenger vehicles. Modern Marvel's Car Tech of the Future will return on the History Channel. The type of engines that will power cars in the future is a subject of much debate. Predictions are as varied as there are models of cars today. But one thing is for sure. We are on the verge of a new era every bit as revolutionary as the one that began the age of the automobile. Is it still going to be piston engine cars that are run on gasoline? Maybe we are going to end up going back to electrics. There's this new propulsion system called fuel cells. Maybe we're going to start turning to that now. So it's very much up in the air, just like it was back then. At the beginning of the 20th century, the technical future of the horseless carriage was undecided. There was no dominant technology. Early cars were powered in a variety of ways. Steam powered railroad cars. It powered boats. Why couldn't it power cars? The steam cars during their day were among the fastest cars. A steam car, you had maximum torque at zero RPM, so acceleration was lightning quick for 1900, 1905. The name synonymous with steam cars is the Stanley Steamer, created by Francis and Freeland Stanley in 1897. A boiler provided enough pressure to drive a two-cylinder engine located onto the floor. The motor had only 16 moving parts and no spark plugs, transmission, clutch, or gear shift. The downside? It took at least half an hour to get up ahead of steam. In 1906, the Stanley brothers built a streamlined speed car powered by a 184 cubic inch twin piston steam engine. This compares to a 735 cubic inch V8 internal combustion engine. Driver Fred Marriott set a world land speed record of 127 miles an hour on Daytona Beach, which remained unbroken for another four years. The steam car lost out to gasoline engines, only after Cadillac's self-starter made starting those cars easier. Besides steam, electricity powered many automobiles. An electric car was quiet, clean running, and easy to handle. They became popular primarily with ladies of the day because you didn't have to get out and crank it to start it or worry about lighting a steam boiler. You just got in, flicked a switch, pushed a lever, and you just were off uh, silently, effortlessly. And of course, there was the gasoline-powered internal combustion engine. Pound for pound, gasoline had more energy in it than just about any other fuel. It was easy to refuel a car with gasoline. It was fairly quick. Gasoline was very efficient. The gasoline-powered automobile seemed to better reflect the new social realities the horseless carriage was ushering in. The gas car had greater range and speed that could provide more mobility and freedom. The decision to make gasoline the fuel of choice was also aided by a major discovery and an industry's willingness to exploit it. When vast oil reserves were discovered in Texas during the, uh, about the turn of the 20th century, gasoline was it after that. There was no question about it. But now, dwindling oil reserves, a shrinking ozone layer, and other environmental pressures have driven automakers to improve the gasoline engine of today's cars. There's been a lot of environmental pressure to try and make cars meet what they call a zero emissions tailpipe standards. What it's done is it's forced the auto manufacturers to build cars that emit with traditional gasoline engines at the same levels as what it would take to charge an electric car. And so those are currently on the road from a number of manufacturers, but at the same time, these cars are more fuel efficient and for their size, more powerful than cars of the past. And they're probably the best cars that have ever been built. But gasoline power alone is not the only option. Recent technology has created a variety of new engines that may do an even better job of propelling the cars of tomorrow. There's a lot of debate today about what powertrains will emerge tomorrow. Internal combustion engines, hybrid electric, diesel, fuel cells, solar, all of these are great new technologies that are emerging that are making internal combustion engines better. 
The fact is, I believe it's going to be a matrix of these. This matrix of potential alternative power sources will take years to develop. But one version is already on the market, hybrid technology using gasoline. The hybrids as we see them today, that really means two power sources in the car. What we're used to seeing today is what they call the hybrid electric, which is an like internal combustion gasoline engine coupled with an electric motor. Toyota is one of several manufacturers that has already committed to this type of hybrid engine, introducing the Prius to the United States in 2000. This vehicle is the second generation of hybrid technology that Toyota has brought to the U.S. market and combines a very efficient 1.5 liter gasoline engine with a very powerful electric drive system, power electronics and electric motor, and a battery system in the rear. It also has a very sophisticated computer system that monitors the driver requirement for speed and acceleration and then chooses whether to use the gasoline engine in its most efficient range or the electric motor in its most efficient range or the combination of the two to provide the best fuel efficiency for the vehicle. The overall combination gets approximately 55 miles to the gallon in combined city and highway driving. Gasoline engines do a really good job of running high speed, constant speed out on a freeway kind of driving. They're very inefficient in stop and start city driving. Whereas electric motors are very efficient in stop and start city driving and not efficient at high speed freeway driving. The Prius utilizes technology which is a breakthrough because it actually, in a synergistic way, combines the best of an internal combustion engine and an electric drive system. The internal combustion engine allows you to use the infrastructure that exists today the gas stations that are there, current gasoline, emission control rules that exist right now. The electrical components that go with that extend beyond what the IC engine can do and gives us a whole new world. The gas motor is recharging the batteries to run the electric motor the next time you need it. And even when you use the brake to stop, the energy of the brakes is fed back through a generator and recharges the batteries so you don't lose any of that energy. It's a wonderful system. It's the future. Where they really make sense is hybrid technology on larger vehicles, SUVs and trucks, where the disadvantage of a hybrid is you have now two power plants. You have a motor, an engine, and a battery pack as well as the, the normal fuel tank. On a larger vehicle, it makes sense you have some place to put all those things. Chrysler is already working on such a vehicle for both military and heavy duty use. The Dodge Ram truck combines a 500 horsepower diesel engine with an electric motor that also generates AC power. They call it the contractor special. That is the target market for us and uh, that's where we think the, uh, who would appreciate the value that this vehicle provides. We think that the, the sum total of those efforts on our part is going to give us a, a, up to 10-11% fuel economy improvement in this vehicle. Ford's Model U is an experimental hybrid. It combines an electric motor with an internal combustion engine that uses hydrogen instead of gasoline. The Model U is an interesting vehicle because it was really a serious look on the part of design and our advanced research department as to what would the next generation Model T possibly look like. This is our hydrogen-fueled internal combustion engine plus a hybrid electric vehicle transmission. Many believe hydrogen may one day completely replace gasoline as an automotive fuel. Engineers see this kind of hybrid as a bridge or stepping stone to understanding hydrogen power. We began with the same engine that's in production in our Ford Ranger pickup trucks to today. Instead of burning gasoline in the engine, we burn hydrogen in the engine to give the engine its, its power. We're also seeing the hybrid electric vehicle transmission system where we've added an electric motor to a standard automatic transmission system. Like the other hybrids, this is a parallel system. Either motor or both can operate as needed for maximum efficiency. Fuel economy is boosted by about 30%. We've actually done some studies and found that a hydrogen fuel car is on a par with a gasoline fuel car on safety. There's pluses and minuses for both, and as a whole, it comes out about equal. And people are certainly comfortable with the risk of driving around in their gasoline fuel cars today. They do it every day. So once we can get past the perception of a safety hazard with hydrogen, people should be just as comfortable driving those cars. And the hybrid concept could be pushed way beyond only two power plants. You could have perhaps a half a dozen in the same vehicle. You could have fuel cells, solar power, 
gasoline. Uh, and let's talk about human power. You might even have human power on board your vehicle. You might have a set of pedals under the dashboard so that if we're creeping through traffic, you don't use any external power, you simply pedal it. The history of the electric vehicle precedes the internal combustion engine. In 1835, a small model car powered by batteries was demonstrated by Professor Stratting in the Netherlands. Modern Marvel's car tech of the future will return on the History Channel. What we're looking at is probably the car you'll be driving in the future. Now, while this car looks like an ordinary Ford Focus on the outside, what makes it so special is it has the most advanced powertrain in the world. It's called a fuel cell. It's an electric car that runs on hydrogen. This is the kind of engine that may be under your hood in 20 years. A fuel cell car is really an electric car. That's what runs the wheels is electric motors. And instead of just a battery that you plug into the wall, it has a fuel cell that converts hydrogen and oxygen into electricity to keep the batteries charged. In the most common fuel cell type called a PEM fuel cell, short for proton exchange membrane, hydrogen atoms are stripped of their electrons or ionized. The positively charged protons pass through the exchange membrane, while the electrons pass through a circuit to provide electric power. On the other side, the ions and protons rejoin with oxygen from the air to make H2O, or water. The water vapor is the only tailpipe emission, and the performance is very respectable. In Ford's car, the fuel cell delivers 85 kilowatts of power. That's equal to 117 horsepower. Fuel cells have been around for a long time. What's new is our ability to put it in an automobile and drive down the road. History credits English lawyer-turned-scientist Sir William Robert Grove as developing what would become known as the fuel cell in 1838. Grove knew that electricity could be used to split a water molecule into its two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, a process known as electrolysis. He figured that the opposite could also be true. His gas battery worked and was later renamed the fuel cell. For more than a century, Many others worked on the concept, but it wasn't until the 1960s that fuel cell technology literally took off. NASA needed a compact way to generate electricity for space missions. Nuclear power was too dangerous, batteries were too heavy, and solar was too cumbersome. The fuel cell was the choice. Besides, its waste product could be drinking water for the astronauts. Now, just about every major car manufacturer has some sort of working fuel cell prototype. In 2002, the city of Los Angeles became the first U.S. customer to lease a fuel cell car. All right, here we go. Okay. This made the Honda FCX the first fuel cell vehicle certified by the California Air Resources Board and United States EPA for everyday commercial use. How does it feel, Mayor? It's a great car. Great car. Very smooth acceleration, and uh, you don't know what's on, though. It's so quiet. The Honda FCX has 80 horsepower, with a maximum speed of 93 miles per hour, giving it performance similar to a 2002 Honda Civic, but with zero emissions. BMW is testing a full-size 7 Series luxury model. The car has a conventionally designed internal combustion engine running on hydrogen. But it gets that hydrogen from a different kind of fuel cell. It's called an SOFC, or Solid Oxide Fuel Cell. This auxiliary power unit, or APU, can create hydrogen from a variety of fuels, including gasoline and natural gas. Fuel passes through a reformer, which pre-processes it before its conversion to hydrogen through its fuel cells stacked in the trunk. This APU will also be operating at 42 volts instead of 12, which will become the standard in the next five years. Conventional systems will need bigger engines with larger alternators and emission systems to do the same. With the advent of 42 volt systems, uh, several manufacturers are building cars where it's a much larger motor generator. So it's the starter motor. When you want to first start the car, once the car is running, it serves as a generator to take the place of the alternator, and it's big enough and powerful enough and durable enough that when you come to a stop, it actually allows the car to be shut off 
and then start it back up again as soon as you put your foot on the accelerator to drive through an intersection or 